fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One, two, three. Let's go, It was almost closing time when Rush Beaumont and the three men in his gang entered the Citizens Bank in the community of Titusville. As the thieves drew their guns, Rush shouted, All right, hike your hands. This is a hold-up. Slim, get the cash from the cashier. Right, boss. Hayes, you help Slim. Right. Put it down, keep everyone else covered. All right, mister. Put all your cash into this saddlebag and hand it to my partner. The cashier moved as if to obey the command. He opened the cash drawer, but instead of withdrawing the currency it held, he grabbed a short-barreled gun. Why, you... The cashier and the two outlaws triggered their weapons at the same moment. As Slim fell back under the impact of a bullet in the shoulder, the cashier dropped to the floor. He was fatally wounded. Wait I'm here, Brush. That loco jughead got me in the shoulder. Rush, those shots will bring the sheriff here. We'll have to shoot our way out. We're leaving right now. Make a run for the horses. Come on, Come on. Don't anyone try to follow us unless you want the same treatment the cashier got. All right, hit the saddle, boys. Can you make it, Slim? Yeah, I'll be all right. Someone's getting fire on us. All right, clear out of here. Come, Come on, on, get up here. Get up here. Half an hour later, Rush signaled a halt. The heavily bearded gunslinger named Hayes protested. We can't stop here. Posse might be on our heels. They'll hang us for gunning that cashier. Yeah, they'll have to catch us first. From now on, we'll travel in pairs. Hayes, you and Bert ride that way. Right. What about you and Slim? We'll head for the hills. If Slim is game... Don't worry, Rush. I'll stick with you. You two better get going. Where do we meet you? Head for Colorado. Slim and I'll meet you at the Silver Dollar Cafe in Empire City. Right. Get it. Get it. A short time after Rush and his men left Titusville, the stagecoach with the state seal on the door came to a halt in front of the Titusville Hotel at the edge of town. The man who stepped out of the vehicle was the governor. In a matter of minutes, he heard of the attempted robbery and immediately set about to get the details of the crime. By darkness, he completed his investigation. Then he went to the sheriff's office to await the lawman's return.
When the sheriff entered the office, he exclaimed, Great day, Governor. I didn't know you were here. You were out of town when I arrived, Sheriff. But I've been looking for four hold-up men, but my posse and I had to give up the search when it got dark. Well, I'm downright sorry I wasn't here to meet you. We thought you'd reach town tomorrow morning for the dedication of the school building. Well, I'm here early because I've made arrangements to meet a man at the Tattersville Hotel at 10 tonight. He'll come directly to my suite, and I want to be sure he'll not be stopped or questioned by any of your deputies when he reaches town. Why would my deputies question a fellow who's in town to see you? They'd have reason to question a mass man, Sheriff. A mass man? Now, Governor, we've had trouble enough with our hoots for one day. He's no outlaw, Sheriff. In fact, he's done more to help the law in this part of the country than any man I know. You uh, may have heard of him. Uh, Who is he? He's called the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? You mean he's coming to Titusville? He'll be here tonight. Uh, then maybe he'll help us find Rush Beaumont and his pal. I maybe... asked him to meet me here to thank him for past services. Not because I wish to call on him for additional help, but uh, I'm sure he'll assist us when he learns the facts. Uh, you want me to give him the facts? I think I'll be able to do that, Sheriff. Meanwhile, I'd appreciate it if you instruct your deputies to extend to the masked man the courtesy and assistance that give to me. I'll talk to him, sir. You may be sure none of my men will question that man's mask. Good. Now I'll go to the hotel and wait for the Lone Ranger. The clock in the governor's suite was striking ten when the Lone Ranger arrived to keep his appointment. The two men greeted each other cordially. Then the governor said, I asked you to come here to thank you for the capture of the Burns gang. The people of the state will be eternally indebted to you, sir. I'm glad Tom and I were able to serve you, Governor. Now I... Well, I'm obliged to turn to you for help again. Just tell me what's to be done, sir. There was an attempted robbery at the bank today. A cashier was killed, and though the would-be thieves got no money, they escaped. The Lone Ranger listened attentively to the details of the attack on the bank. When the Governor finished the account, the masked man murmured, Rush Beaumont again, huh? Yes, that's right, he and his men were recognized by one of the witnesses. Beaumont and his gang should have been in prison long ago. The sheriff and the posse followed their trail, but they had to give up after dark. I've already talked to the sheriff about you. He and his men will give you all the assistance you need if you care to take up the search. How long I'll start at once. Hey, wait. Uh, uh, pardon me? You may have to travel a long way. The trail may take you to another county, perhaps another state. I'll give you a letter to any lawman who might question your mask. You're very thoughtful, sir. It's the least I can do, sir. I'll have the letter ready in a minute. Rush Beaumont and Slim Peters reached Empire City several weeks later. It was sundown when they drew oh, rain oh, and dismounted oh. in front of the Silver Dollar Cafe. <sighs> As they pushed through the batwing doors, Rush studied the long, elaborately furnished cafe. His face was expressionless, but his eyes flashed recognition when he saw Bert and Hayes at a table in the far corner of the room. Yeah, there they are, Rush. Hayes is signaling to us. I see them. Come on. <laughs> Hi there, Rush. Bert, Hayes. Howdy, fellas. So that cashier's bullet didn't kill you, Slim. Ah, it was only a flesh wound. And I'll bet the cashier died of lead poison. Yeah, too bad he started gunfire. Uh, if he hadn't, we'd have cleaned out the bank. As it is, we're doggone near broke. Well, Rush and I have enough cash to last for a few days. Meantime, we'll figure a way to make a quick cleanup. I thought you'd want to do that, Rush. Bert and I have been looking things over since we got here. Uh, what'd you find out? The railroad runs an express train through here that not only carries the payrolls from the mines, but plenty of gold and silver, too. We scouted the railroad tracks, Rush. There's a place called Morgan's Gap, about 10 miles from town. It's an ideal spot for a holdup. After the holdup, we'll hit the trail and we'll Not so fast, Bert. Well, what's wrong? What about the ground around the gap? Will it show tracks? Yeah. That means the law will be on our trail again. I'm tired of running. So am I. We'll have to take some risk. Unless you want to pull a robbery in a rainstorm. Yeah, that's an idea, Bert. If we could tell a day or so ahead when there'd be a heavy general rain, we could make plans for the holdup and be sure our trail would be wiped out. How do you tell ahead of time when it'll rain? Well, I don't hey, know. Hold on. There is a way to find that out. What? 
I've heard that there's a new Army weather station on Eagle Plateau, a couple of miles east of the Gap. What do you mean, weather station? The Army Signal Corps runs them. To forecast the weather? Yeah. They signal with flags to a military post to the east. The stations read with the telegraph wire to send and receive reports from the west. And the critter on duty is a telegrapher as well as a weatherman. That's right. That's the best news we've heard yet, Rush. We'll go to that station. Now, now hold on, Slim. The Army doesn't give that information to everyone who asks for it. Why not? Well, you have to be a soldier or a lawman to get it. They don't give reports to the public. Oh. In that case, we'll figure a way to get the information. How? I don't know yet. All right, but... Rush. Here comes a waiter to take our order. Yeah, good. I'm mighty hungry. We'll order a meal and make our plans while we eat. Though they discussed the problem at length, the four men were unable to think of a way to secure the weather information. That night, they went to a hotel. For the first time since they fled from Titusville, Rush and Slim relaxed. Confident that they had outrun the law, they slept soundly. When he wakened, Rush Beaumont remembered a mail-order deputy's badge he carried in his saddlebag. He dressed, put the badge into his pocket, and joined his friends in the Silver Dollar Cafe where they were eating breakfast. Boys, I figured a way to get that weather information. How's that going? Hayes, you said the fellow at the weather station gives reports to the Army and the law. Yeah, that's right. Here, take a look at this. Where'd you get that badge? Did you kill a deputy? Hey, wait a minute, Fiddler. Take a closer look at that piece of tin. What? Huh? Oh, it's a fake. <laughs> <laughs> you have good eyes, Hayes. But the critter on duty at the weather station won't have a chance to get such a close look at it. What do you mean? I figured to fool him with this mail order badge. How? Oh. By using it to pose as a deputy sheriff. You might as well forget it, Rush. Chances are he knows all the deputies in Empire City. We'll claim we're from another county. We'll say we're looking for a couple of crooks across the county line. We? You'll be members of my posse. Oh, that's all right. Once he's convinced we're lawmen, he'll give us all the information we need. We'll be all right if he doesn't take a close look at that badge. But if he sees that it's a fake... If then... he makes trouble, we'll get our information at gunpoint. Then finish him off before we leave so you'll not tell anyone we were at the weather station. So finish your coffee, boys. We're heading for that place right now. In picking up the trail of the fugitives, the Lone Ranger and Toto found the place where they split to travel in pairs. The masked man and Toto followed the tracks of two horses. By means of adroit questioning at various places along the way, they were able to pursue the two riders from Texas across Indian Territory and into Colorado. Late that morning, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion drew rain in the hills west of Empire City. Oh, 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 big oh, well, uh, trail of two crooks lead to town, Kimosabe. Yes, you're right, Toto. Those tracks aren't more than a day old. Ah. And what do we do now? I'll wait here while you ride to town to make inquiries about Beaumont and his friends. Find out if they're in Empire City. Well, what if they're gone? Then try to learn how long ago they left and where they were heading. Ah. Get him up, Scott. It was noon when Rush and his men guided their horses up the tree-covered slope that led to the top of Eagle Plateau. They drew rein and dismounted in a clearing. Oh, oh they're they're heading. Heading. Looks like they cut down a lot of trees to clear ground for that weather station. Wonder why the army didn't clear the whole plateau. Hey, what do the flags at the top of that pole mean? They're signal flags. I know that much, but I don't savvy what they mean. Bert, you used to be a telegrapher. Do you know what they're for? I know Morse code. Signal flags are out of my line. Rush, should we go to the back door or the front? We'll go to the front. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Thank <laughs> you.
to continue. A master sergeant named Bob Bones was the only man on duty at the weather station. He had few visitors, and he welcomed the opportunity to talk to the outlaws who introduced themselves as lawmen. But before he would give them any information, he asked, May I see your credentials? Well, uh, I showed you my badge. Well, have you any other identification? Other identification? Well, yes, a badge could be stolen. I'd like to see papers of identification, Deputy. Well, papers can be stolen as easily as a badge, Sergeant. If you think we... Do you have identifying credentials? Well, matter of fact, I haven't. You see, we left town in a hurry to follow a couple of crooks. Well, in that case, you'll not object if I check with the sheriff of your county. I'll telegraph him about you and your posse. As soon as I receive a clearance... Oh, uh, hold on, Sergeant. We, we don't want to put you all that trouble. Not a question of trouble, Beaumont. I have orders to give weather information to qualified lawmen and no one else outside the Army itself. Now, if you'll give me the name and address of the sheriff of your county... Looks like he's got us in a corner, Rush. Yeah. What do we do now? Cover him. Right. Hey, what's the idea of the guns? My boys will keep you covered while I take yours. It's a federal offense to come here and pull guns on me. You're our prisoner, Sergeant. If you're smart, you'll tell us what we want to know. You said you wanted weather reports. That's right, we do. You don't stand a chance of getting them. You'll give them to us, Sergeant, or... Or what? Or there'll be a dead man here when we leave this place. You mean you'd commit murder just to get those reports? You wouldn't be the first man we've shot. Now tell us, how soon is it going to rain? Well, uh, according to my calculations, it's due to start raining at 5 o'clock this evening. How long will it last? At least 24 hours. You hear that, boys? Yeah, yeah but what about the trains, Rush? Bert and I found out about the schedule. The express goes through the gap every night at 6 o'clock. How do we know it'll be carrying enough cash to make a hold up worthwhile? It carries gold and silver from the mines on every trip. Each day it stops at a different mine. There's more than half a dozen big ones in these parts. And their shipments keep the railroad busy. In that case, we can't lose. You have plenty to lose. You're loco, Sergeant. If we get a gold or silver shipment from that train, we'll be on easy street. You'll not be able to carry a whole shipment. We'll take your horse with us. We'll split the loot into four saddlebags. It'll be easier to carry. You've overlooked one thing. Yeah? If that telegraph key starts sounding and I don't answer it, someone will come here to investigate. And when they do, you... <laughs> someone will be here to send and receive messages, Sergeant. Huh? Bert Savvy's Morse code. Used to be a telegrapher. He'll stay here to watch you and that telegraph key. Oh. So you see, we haven't overlooked a thing. Hey, is are there any big trees near the gap? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of big evergreens at the south end of the gap. All right, we'll cut a couple of them down, set up a barricade. That'll not only stop the train, it'll probably derail it. You coming back here after the holdup? No. And what'll I do Step with... outside for a minute, Bert. All right. I don't say we... Keep that sergeant covered, Hayes. All right. Let me tie his hands and feet. All right. That's the idea, Blush. Why couldn't you talk inside? Because I didn't want that soldier to hear what I had to say. The train is due to go through the gap at 6 o'clock, Bert. Yeah, I know that. You shoot the sergeant at 5.30. Leave here and ride to the gap to meet us. Why not put a bullet through him now and save me the trouble of guarding him? It'll be all right with me, but you might need information from him. Someone might telegraph for special reports that you couldn't know anything about. Yeah, that's so. Just remember, if he lives to talk, you'll send a description of us to the federal authorities as well as the local ones. The law here has nothing on us yet, and I want to keep it that way. Count on me, Rush. I'll take care of the soldier. Good. Now, the rest of us will ride to the gap. There'll be some work to do before that train gets there. Tahoe spent several hours in Empire City making inquiries about Beaumont and his gang. It was 2.30 in the afternoon when he returned to the Lone Ranger with a report. Oh, scum, oh, fella. Easy, scum. Well, Toto, are Beaumont and his men in Empire City? Well, me learn two fella and gang reached town two, three day ago. Beaumont. Other fellow get to town yesterday. Are they still there? Them leave early this morning. Head east. Now, we'll ride to the eastern edge of town to try to pick up their trail. You ride through town with masks? No, Toto. We'll avoid the town. Easy, silly big fellow. If we can't pick up Beaumont's trail, we'll scout the hills to the east to try to find him. Uh, Me. Me ready. Monsieur! Come up, scout! Meanwhile, in the weather station, Sergeant Bones tried to think of a means of escape. The ropes around his wrists and ankles were firmly tied. He realized he couldn't loosen them. Then suddenly he thought of a plan. He turned to Bert and said, This is the time of day I generally raise a signal flag. Forget it. But this station's in visual communication with an army post. What about it? Unless I signal the post on schedule, they'll suspect something's wrong. 
Now, what's the signal? Continuous rain for 24 hours, accompanied by an unusually high... Never mind that. How do you signal the post? Well, I'll take care of it if you'll free my hands and... Not a chance, Sergeant. In that case, I hope someone comes here to investigate. I'll do the signaling. But the position of the flag on the flagpole is important. It would be easier for me to raise it... I said I'd do it. Very well. Take down the American flag and fasten to the flagpole upside down. Then what? Then raise it to the top of the pole. Upside down? That's right. Why? That's a storm signal. At 4.30, the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend reached the vicinity of the weather station. They were following the tracks of four men when Toto sighted the cabin in the distance. What that building, Kimasabi? That's the new Army weather station, Toto. Mm, a savvy weather station. The Signal Corps has established a number of those stations at various places in the country to foretell the weather, a new experiment. How Army foretell weather? Well, they use complicated instruments and they... Oh, great Scott. Mm, what matter? Look at the flag on top of that pole. Let me see it. Flying upside down. Mm, maybe weather fella make mistake. Raise flag upside down. No Army man would make that mistake with the American flag, Toto. It must have been done intentionally. Why? All soldiers know the flag thrown upside down is a signal of dire peril. Then Teller and Weather Station need help. Yes. Come on, Toto. We'll try to give it to him. Monsilver! The monks come! The sky was darkening with the threat of impending rain as Scout and Silver ascended the sloping side of the plateau. As they reached the top, a clap of thunder roared across the sky. A moment later, the rain began. We'll approach the cabin on foot, Tonto, to avoid being seen. He's least any big foot. He's savvy. Inside the cabin, Bert moved to the front window and looked out at the storm. He smiled crookedly. Well, Sergeant, you weren't far wrong. What do you mean, wrong? I told you it'd rain. It started sooner than you expected. Oh, it's impossible to calculate a storm exactly. Oh, it suits me fine. The longer it rains, the better I like it. What's the... Bert whirled from the window as the door behind him opened. He reached for his gun, but the masked man and Toto had already drawn. Keep your hands away from your holster. You must have There's soldier tied to chairs. More outlaws. We're not outlaws, Sergeant. We're here to help you. Toto, take that man's gun. Uh, let me get it. As soon as he's disarmed, I'll cut those ropes. What? What brought you here? Your distress signal. I hoped someone would see it. You'd better tell us what happened, Sergeant. Bert realized the futility of making a sudden move. With two guns covering him, he stood quietly while Toto took his revolver. Then the masked man freed Sergeant Bones. When the sergeant finished his account of the afternoon's events, the Lone Ranger said, We've been trailing Beaumont and his men. You've been trailing them? Yes, we followed them all the way from Texas. But Texas? That's right. You're going back there to hang for murder. Who are you, mister? You talk like a lawman, but that man... I have a letter from the governor of Texas that may help to identify me. As soon as the sergeant read the letter, he was eager to cooperate with the Lone Ranger's plans. He explained that Rush and two of his men were in the gap to stop the express train. If you approach the gap from the north, you'll be able to leave your horses ground hitched at the entrance. Then it'll be easy to move in on foot. Good. We'll be able to surprise those three. While you are gone, I'll get busy on the telegraph. I'll send word to the nearest army post and to the sheriff. <laughs> At 20 minutes to 6, Rush, Slim, and Hayes waited uncomfortably in the rain for the arrival of the express. Several big evergreen trees lay across the tracks. My clothes are soaking wet. Ah, shut up, Slim. You're not the only one who's wet. I hope the train's on time. Well, if it's late, we'll wait for it. As soon as it hits that barricade, we'll board the express car. Be sure to cover your faces with bandanas. Right. Bert should be here soon. Yeah, and Sergeant Bone should be dead by this time. You're wrong, Bone. Hey, hey, what's the that? The masked man of the engine. Hey, they're behind us. Don't reach for your gun. Well, I'll try. <laughs> you were warned, Bone. You two want gunplay? No, no, my hands are up. Don't shoot us. How'd you know we were here? Sergeant Bones told me where to find you. But Bert was supposed to be. Bert's on... a prisoner. Tie their hands and feet, Tonto, while I keep them covered. Mm -hmm. Tie them. Now call Silver. We'll need his help to move those logs from the tracks. <laughs> With the help of Tonto, his lariat, and the great horse Silver, 
the Lone Ranger finally moved the logs from the tracks. A few minutes later, the express roared through the gap and continued its journey. The three outlaws stared glumly after it. And as it faded from view, there was a new sound. Hey, Rush, listen. That sounds like an army bugle. It is a bugle. Sergeant Bones sent for those soldiers. They're coming to take you three into custody. Soon, the soldiers from the nearby military post had the prisoners ready for the trip to Empire City. The captain of the group spoke to the Lone Ranger. Well, we have no facilities to keep him at the post, so we'll turn him over to the sheriff in town. When these three are in jail, the sheriff will probably go to the weather station to pick up the prisoner Sergeant Bones is holding. All four of them are wanted for murder in Texas, Captain. Well, don't worry, mister. They'll get all they deserve. Will you ride to town with us? Thanks, but Todd and I are heading south to make a report to a friend of ours. Easy. Easy, Easy. Adios. Goodbye. Monsieur. Come on. Come on. Rush, you and your smart ideas. We'd still be in the clear if you hadn't decided to pull a hole up in the rain. We'd have gotten away with it if it hadn't been for that mask, man. A lot of crooks have said the same thing about the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.